when it comes to strafing, it doesn't really matter how often you switch the side. You don't have to use any arbitrary rhythms. A lot of the time I see in tutorials, people are advising you to switch the side every two jumps or something like that, for example. Let me show you. They tell you to do this. Ah. So like two jumps and then switch side. One, two, switch side, one, two, switch side, one, two, switch side, and so on. I can't even do it properly. And I think the problem with that is that it puts too much emphasis on the act of strafing. And what you end up seeing is people doing awkward movement like this. And then somebody helpful comes along and advises them to do the turning smoother, which is when this awkward movement evolves into something like this. And while that might be slightly better, it's not optimal. And I think what might help to that is to forget that the technique has anything to do with strafing. We call it strafe jumping, and that's what we have to live with. But what I'm proposing is that you forget that strafing ever existed, and all that matters is turning. To put it simply, turning equals speed. Pay attention to what I'm about to do now. Did that look like strafing? Of course it didn't, because all I did there was gradually turn into the air. Let me do that again, a little bit differently this time. Slain. Revenge. So I did the same thing, except I was holding forward key. How is that possible? I was not strafing, yet I was gaining speed. Well, I told you why, and that's because all that matters is the turning. Turning motion is all that matters. You can turn with all of your eight movement directions. Regardless of the movement key you're pressing, the behavior is always the same. One easy way to visualize the turning behavior is if you imagine that you're always orbiting around planets and the directions of the planets are always assigned by your movement key. So in this instance I will be turning with my diagonal left and that thing visualizes the planet. As you can see I was kind of orbiting around it. I can do the same thing with left. I have to aim it kind of like this. The planet is going to be on my left side, which means I have to change my view angle. And then the turning will look something like this. I think you can see the orbiting much better when I'm using the forward key to turn. Let's have a look. It's like you're a speeding asteroid and the planet's gravity is changing your trajectory. Right now, I am not executing the optimal turning rate, which is why the hot panel is showing red and yellow. But I think you can at least see how the turning behavior works. Now, as we all know, you couldn't possibly only ever turn one direction. Although you can try, but usually something will block your way. So what you have to do, what you have to learn to do, is to occasionally switch the side as well. But some people have trouble doing the side switching. That's because there's something called the acceleration zone. And if you look at me turning, you can see my mouse is gradually moving like this. That's because I'm following the acceleration zone. Pay attention to the speed meter on the center. 
and see what happens to it as I'm attempting to switch the side. Switching side. Let's try that again. Switching side. As you can see, there's a brief moment there as I'm switching sides. There's a moment there where I'm not gaining any speed. And that's because as I'm following the acceleration zone like this, the trail I leave behind is something called the dead zone. The, the path that I'm traveling becomes the dead zone. And the dead zone angle grows bigger and bigger the more speed I have. So in order to switch the side and continue gaining speed, you have to jump over the dead zone like this. The side switching will then look something like this. You have to remember with your muscle memory how big the angle is. You can of course use some HUD elements that help you with that, but it's better if you get used to the angles naturally and you don't have to depend on some HUD stuff. There's nothing inherently magical about the diagonal directions while you're strafe jumping. You don't go faster, it's not easier, nothing like that. All directions are equal in terms of acceleration and air control. But what makes this technique convenient is the fact that you have a relatively nice view angle to the direction where you're going. But if that's why you decide to pick that technique, then you might find it equally fancy to try out the inverted technique, which looks like this. It's also a nice view angle and you see where you're going. So which techniques are the best and which ones should you be using? I don't think you should worry about the techniques themselves, because if you can get used to the way the movement behaves, the same way you're used to WASD key movement on the ground, like typical FPS movement. If you can get to that level, techniques are just what we call your playstyle. Don't worry about them. All that matters is the act of turning. Like, as long as you can find some awkward way to turn while still gaining speed consistently, I think you should just go with that, whether it's the inverted style or the regular style, or perhaps even the half beat, which is a combination of the two, which in my opinion is the best style because it minimizes the switching you have to do, or the angle when you're switching sides, which makes it very efficient for speed gain. This is a very good place to practice and I'm not sure if they actually made this... I'm not sure if they made some changes here that made it easier, but it, it does feel easier than before. Let's see if I can do it sideways. Yeah, I recommend trying this jump. If you want something more challenging, then for that I recommend this jump. Have fun. Bye.